wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Fuad Kassab. Hey everyone, it's Joe here. I'm on my own this week. Um, Fuad and I have been flat chat with a lot of things going on and we get both getting a bit tired towards the end of the year. <laughs> so Fuad's having a couple of days off and um, then we're off to Perth on Monday for our seminars over there. Well, I'm leaving on Monday with the kids so that we can spend a little bit of time with the family over there. And then um, our seminars start on Wednesday and we have seminars morning and evening, Wednesday and Friday in Perth. So if you haven't booked in yet and you still would like to, there's still some space left. Um, You can go to the events page on Quirky Cooking and you'll find all the details there. So we're looking forward to that. But you know what? I think we're really looking forward to having a break over Christmas. So who's looking forward to Christmas? Yay! Maybe you are not looking forward to it because you all you can think of is all the stress and the busyness and the craziness of Christmas. I hope that's not the case, but just in case it is, um, Fuad and I decided to interview some of our health friends <laughs> um, about what their Christmas looks like, um, just to get some inspiration for healthy, simple, um, family-focused holidays that are not all about the commercialism side of Christmas because that is very stressful and we don't need it in our lives at all. So, um, you know, when I was growing up, Christmas was such a beautiful family time. And to me, I still think of Christmas as family and food. That's the main things. You know, the presents when your kids are, when you're a kid, they're, they're so exciting. But how many times have you bought presents for your kids at Christmas and three days later they're either broken or forgotten and in a corner and you think well that was a waste of money (laughs) so I know I've done that quite a few times Um, and I you know over the years I've learned that um, it's best to have experiences more than clutter and um, family time is more more precious than um, adding to what you have and what you really don't need. Um, And there's lots of great ideas out there for ways to make Christmas and the holiday season a really special time and an exciting time for kids without them feeling, you know, left out because they didn't get all the stuff that their friends got. Um, There's just so many things that you can do as a family to make it a beautiful time of year. And um, we just wanted to pick the brains of all our favorite people. Well, a few of our favorite people. We can't fit them all on before Christmas um, and just get some ideas from them. So um, we'll start off our Christmas series with uh, an interview with Cindy O'Meara. Um, so I was thinking about it yesterday and I thought, I'm just going to send her a message and see if she's got time. And she said, I've got time today. So woohoo, got Cindy first. And um, we're also going to be chatting with Jude Blarow and Elise Comerford and um, we'll see who, who else we have time for. Um, but if you've got any questions about ways to make Christmas simpler and less stressful and um, just you want some ideas of something specific, feel free to email us at help at quirkycooking.com.au and we'll add the questions to our next interview. And hopefully we'll be able to all get some great tips for Christmas this year. Um, So for those of you who are coming to our seminars in Perth, we'll see you next week. We are excited to see you and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, And we're going to also um, be sharing some more exciting news soon. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to our newsletter, you may want to check that out. Um, We don't overload you with newsletters because that's a lot of work writing newsletters. (laughs) So we just send them out now and then when we have something important to say. Um, So if you want to sign up to that, you can can go to the blog to quirkycooking.com.au and find the subscribe button and you'll, um, you'll get the latest news, whatever events are going to be in your area and um, our new projects, news about those. Um, So you'll see all that there. But 
yeah, our main focus for the rest of the year is to slow down, begin to have some time off with the family um, and begin preparing for Christmas in a nice, simple way, nothing too stressful and um, just enjoy this life that we have, which is so precious and which we can rush past without thinking about too much sometimes. Um, so I hope you all have a beautiful day and I hope you enjoy this podcast with Cindy. Oh, I should say, if you haven't met Cindy before or read anything about her, Cindy is um, a nutritionist who's been speaking on health and whole foods and healthy lifestyle for, oh, I don't know, 30 years, I think. Um, and I first read her book, Changing Habits, Changing Lives, probably, ooh, I'm thinking 12 years ago or so. Um, she was such an inspiration to me to be able to get my health on track and to understand the why behind the changes I needed to make. Because if you don't understand the why, you often just don't make the changes. Um, and that book is available in our online store, quirkycooking.com.au. Um, if you click on the tab for the shop, um, and I really highly recommend it, especially for those of you just beginning on this journey. It's something that will really help you to get started and be encouraged to make one change at a time, not overwhelm yourself. Um, and Cindy is so down to earth and so realistic with this stuff. It's not, um, it's not going to freak you out. It's not going to make you feel like I can't do this. Um, and this podcast will, will show you, um, you know, that kind of thinking. So it's all doable. So all the best and have an awesome day and we'll be back with you. Oh, <laughs> I keep thinking of things I forgot to say. Oh dear. Sorry about that. Um, but we're going to release our podcasts every fortnight for a while because we've just got so much on our plates working on our new book and traveling and Christmas coming up and family. And we don't want to, um, we don't want to overload ourselves and we don't want to overload you guys. So I'm sure you've got plenty on your plates as well. So um, we'll be here, but just fortnightly for a while. Okay. Thanks so much for listening. We love you guys and we'll chat to you soon. Hi, Cindy. So nice hey. to have you here. <laughs> hey, Jo. It's always good to chat to you. Oh, I love having you on the podcast. We haven't done it for ages. No, it's been a while. You're always so busy tripping around to places like Africa and who knows where else. Where else have you been lately? <laughs> well, uh, yesterday I just got back from Three Capes, which is a hike in southeast eastern Tasmania. And oh, wow. um, I, I booked Karen in Karen Smith, I booked Kim Morrison in, I booked my two girls in and myself. Aww. And then I just kind of said to our group of hiking friends, anybody want to come? And uh, we had 32 go. <laughs> was it good? Oh, it was amazing. Uh -huh. Karen and Kim didn't go. Like oh. that many people said, oh, I can't go now. Aww. And I would, I would always have somebody to fill their space. Yeah. So we filled all the spaces of all the people who didn't go. So Karen and Kim ended up not going, but my girls and I, a couple of my swimming buddies went Aww. one token male and ah, it was that's hilarious. Oh, he, Chad, oh, he was fabulous, <laughs> but we had, it was just, um, it was an amazing walk with amazing women doing amazing things and mm -hmm. Chad, Chad, is yep. doing a mind, body, spirit um, thing in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really lots of good uh, discussions. Oh, amazing discussions, amazing talks. I just love women in circles. Yeah, I just love it. I think that they achieve so much. And oh, as one of the girls said, her name was Angela Council. As she said, I know women have all. Sat in circles. Yeah, women have always sat in circles. Yeah. And we stopped doing that. And it was interesting. Some of the women that went on the walk um, actually said they don't have a women's circle. They don't have a group of friends. They've got, you know, maybe sons, husbands, and yeah. work colleagues, but not. And they were really like, I want to do this again. So, yeah. It's so important to have yeah. that time with other women. You need yeah. it. Yeah. 
kids and men need men, they you know, do. like they, they, they used to go off hunting and go do their thing. And yeah. we women used to sit in circles and look after the kids and um, talk about all the women's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I but even it. just, it's kind of like you feel like you sort out your, like we have to talk to sort out our problems. That's kind of how we do it, right? And so when we're together, like talking it out, it just helps so much. Mm. It really does. It does help. And like I used to walk with two girls. Yeah. You know, when my kids were little, I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning. We'd meet at quarter to five. We'd walk till quarter to six, have coffee till quarter past six, and then wow. we're home. That's beautiful. And we did it every single morning wow. while our kids were growing up and we were each other's counsel. It yeah, was, definitely. It was wonderful. Yeah. And don't you find when you're walking, it kind of loosens your thoughts a bit and it just all like it's so easy to talk while you walk I find yeah. with my kids even it's it's a great way to um get them to open up if you go for a walk together they just really open up well you know I had my two adult girls with me oh, you know they're beautiful. 27 and 25 yeah and we walked for four days together and yeah it was um they had so much fun together Aww. it was fun watching those two that's awesome and then interacting with every age you know from the young 20 year old girls yeah. so we had a couple of mother and daughters um group and then all the way up to shane gould was in our group so I feel like i know that name she was in survivor she won survivor ah, last year she's okay this year i should say she won survivor but she's a gold medalist silver medalist bronze medalist she was 15 when she Whoa. went to the olympics and won you know, everything. I can't even imagine that. I have a 15-year-old and I cannot imagine that. <laughs> that's so, yeah, wow, that's so disciplined. Yes, very disciplined. And her wisdom was uh, palpable. Just wow. I loved listening to her and she, we would be walking along and talking and then she'd stop and we would get in a circle, maybe four of us, three of us, and we would discuss issues mm. and life issues yeah. and it was it was oh, it was amazing. It was almost like okay, now we stop because this is important. Okay, Aww. now we move on. And yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it sounds it's like good. you had an awesome time. Well, that's very. Um, so, f did you say three or four days of walking? Four days of walking. Wow. walking and you you take all your food and you wow. you take your sleeping gear. So and impressive. They have huts and <laughs> yeah, it was it was good. And of course, yeah. I. I had um, a curry. I'd made a curry and I'd freeze dried it. Yep. And so uh, we ate like queens. Oh, that's amazing. Like, How do you freeze yeah. dry it? Do you have like a special thing for freeze drying? Well, I'd like to buy myself a freeze dried, um, it's a freeze dried freezer, whatever you call them. I don't even know. Yeah. Um, I, but I actually took it to Yandina. Um, in Yandina, there's a freeze dryer and I took it to him. And I made 15 litres and wow. uh, he freeze-dried it for me. And then I packaged it wow. uh, in Changing Habits packaging. And <laughs> I Okay, why, why aren't you selling these? <laughs> well, um, everybody, like I looked at the ingredients of the... Oh, the they're shit. shocking, they the ones terrible. that you buy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And everybody was constipated and everybody was yep. dehydrated. Yep. And I just said to them, well, look at the food you're consuming, you yeah. know. And my girls and I, and I gave it to my sister-in-law as well, as well as a, a young naturopath that just couldn't find anything good. So she yeah. asked me if she could buy some from me, yeah. as well as another girlfriend. We all ate my beautiful, organic, Aww. amazing chicken curry. That's so uh, cool. Freeze dried, and, and everybody was doing amazingly. We were like, somebody said to me, you're like a gazelle, Cindy. You just <laughs> <put it together." laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to one day you having that in your shop because I think that's a great idea. My I husband would buy it. <laughs> ah, well, it's, you, it's, just wait and see. Yeah. I might need Fuad and you to come up with some there recipes. There you go. For. There you go. <laughs> well, I we used to. Do, we could do it as a um, a joint venture. There you go. I used to dehydrate like spaghetti bolognese and things like that for my husband when he went camping. Um, nowadays, he's a bit more like. He doesn't usually go for long periods of time these days and he just takes a few bits and pieces, but it's such a good way to do it. Anyway, we should talk about Christmas. Oh, Christmas. That's what we're oh, here for, that's isn't right. it? <laughs> Talking about Christmas, I yes. said to my husband when I got home, I said, you know what, I'd like to do that walk through Christmas. Yeah. I just, just get away from the Imagine Christmas that. craziness and let's just as a family walk. 
<laughs> now that is a good idea. Yeah. Total downtime. Yeah. No phones, maybe. I don't know. Nope. There might be phones. No reception? Nope. That would be nope. good. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Wow. So um, have you ever done anything like that at Christmas, like completely gone off grid? Oh, good question. We um, we do go away um, around Christmas. Every second year we go overseas, mm-hmm. so it's just our nuclear family and we're doing it this year as well. Oh, yeah, so it. we're going to have a white Christmas and we're oh. going to Jackson Hole um, and then on to Park City, Utah. Oh, wow. and, and to me that's a little bit off for us because yeah. – it's just us. We don't yeah. we don't do Christmas parties. We leave yeah. early December. We mm-hmm. spend the whole month there right oh. through the we, – we come back the second week of January and we just – yeah, we go off, off grid as a family. Oh, I love um, that idea. Yeah. And then we do all the trappings of, of Christmas. We usually only buy one present each. Yeah. So everybody goes into a, a, a lottery. You, mm-hmm. you spend so much money. And you buy one present for one person. Yeah. Um, and it's then a way to cut down sell- on the clutter and the oh. craziness. <laughs> you know what? I just I just find that we it's very. Con- I'm probably not going to be good for your podcast. No, no. I, this is the kind of stuff we like. This is what oh, we want to hear. I just find it so commercialized, it is. and it is. It is, and our kids get way too many presents. Yeah, I agree. I think it's more about being together as a a group, sharing uh, a beautiful meal that we've all worked towards getting. Yeah. So um, if I'm in Australia, I buy my turkey from the turkey man, mm-hmm. Hewitt. Um, he has the best turkeys. I order my turkey, you know, <laughs> way ahead of time. How, how um, long ahead do you have to order it? Uh, I usually – he usually calls me. Okay. He usually said, right, Cindy, I know you want one. What do you want? Oh, that's um, so he's probably called me six, eight weeks ago already. Wow. And I said, oh, I'm going to be away this this Christmas, so I won't need it. So I, I usually order a 10 kilo mm-hmm. and I will stuff it mm-hmm. and stuff it with a beautiful almond um, – like Tanya and I usually look up a really good recipe mm-hmm. and we stuff it with, you know, gluten-free because yeah. none of us eat it. And um, I cook it all day. So I, yep. I usually – it's 24 hours actually. So wow. I put it on For 60 10. degrees. Yeah. Yep, 60 degrees. And um, I think it's about 18 hours. I think it was 18 hours last year I, I put it in the oven at 60 degrees. Oh, my gosh. Mm, yum. It is stunning. You That's just can't crazy. beat it, can you? You've got to have a turkey. We still have turkey every year for Christmas. My mum wouldn't be without it. <laughs> I was brought in an, up in an American household. And Same. <laughs> I, I just didn't know anything else. And yeah. cranberry jelly. Yeah, got to have made. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then she would do all the roast vegetables, pumpkin, yep. and potato. Um, we would have beans. Mm-hmm. And she made pudding. She always yep. made pudding. And then the last thing that she would do is that we would have coffee and rum balls. Yeah. So I just had to make it all, you know, Gluten free, yes. so we don't do pudding anymore. Um, although I can make a pudding, but we usually uh, I, for the rumbles I do date squishes, which is Tanya Hubbard's recipe. But uh, I yeah. don't use cacao powder um, or dried ginger. I use fresh ginger and I use my cacao melts. Beautiful. So I always make them oh, and they go yum. on. Uh, yeah, Are you going to share on. that recipe somewhere with your? I better tweets? do that. I think nice. you should. I yeah, <laughs> my mum always had a crystal bowl. So my mum's been gone 12 years, but yeah. she had a crystal bowl that the rumbles would go into. Yeah. So I have that crystal bowl and the date squishes go into that crystal Aww. bowl. So Love it. Yeah. So it's, a it's gorgeous tradition. It is. So, it's a, what, it's a good sorry. One. so what's your most favourite part of Christmas and holiday season? Like my as fam- in what's your – yeah. Yeah, my family yeah. and more than anything just having them all there. Like we had it up the farm – was it not last Christmas, but the Christmas before? We did go up the farm and have it. It was 18 degrees up there. We put the fire on. Oh, really? In summer? Yeah, yeah. It was misty. <laughs> oh, we had to, you know. It was yeah. misty and cool. We all yeah. had, um, actually, it started at 15, but it made it to 18, I think. And we all That's had good our for dry fire. phones on. And oh. I had 25 people um, <laughs> for Christmas. Yeah. 
That's good. Beautiful. So and, I think I think it's family and friends. Yeah. And food, right? Food. <laughs> food. I always I always think, you know, it's not it's definitely not the presence. I mean, that's just when you're a kid, that's of course very exciting. But as the older you get, I think the more you appreciate just getting back together with the family, especially when you don't see them most of the year. Like for me, my sisters and everything, and just all being in the kitchen cooking together. Yeah. To me, that's Christmas. <laughs> I just love that. No, I'm with you on that one. I I, I think it's all getting around. I, there's. My mum was a real traditional Christmas person and yeah. I have continued that and I always have my dad with me at Christmas and mm-hmm. so he, do- he doesn't come to the snow with us so he'll, he'll have Christmas. Someone will invite him, someone from the church will invite him for yeah. Christmas. So, um, oh, that's good. But, yeah, it's, it's a lovely time of year and because I live in a hot climate, yeah. as do you, <laughs> at Christmas time. Very hot. We, we also love to go to the beach early in the morning so we get yeah. up. We ride our bikes down the beach. Uh, we swim. We always um, have our hats on, our snowman's hats. I know that sounds really stupid. <laughs> That's but so we, cute. <laughs> we can put our elf hats and our snowman hats on. Yeah. <laughs> and we go down the beach and we swim and we have coffee because there's a coffee shop op- open and it's so busy. So oh, busy. really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we have that coffee and then we all come home and that's when we start any preparation that hasn't been prepared the day before. Yeah. Um, and we start to get the veggies in, and and we usually sit down around one, and and yeah, and then just watch the sunset, and Beautiful. that's the end of the day. Beautiful. It's great, isn't it? Um, do you have any um, tips for people who, when their kids are younger, and there's all the Christmas parties and the family gatherings and the food that's not so great? What did you do when your kids were little to? help them to stay sort of healthy or did you sort of let them have a little bit more leeway at Christmas? How did you manage that? Well, you know, there's, as, as they go to school, there's, there's parties, there's mm-hmm. birthday parties. Yeah. And in the beginning I said to my kids, you know, you know how we eat, you're welcome to try the food there. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? If they did, they would vomit on the way home. I had the same experience with my daughter. <laughs> I thought, well, there's the lesson for you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there's the lesson. Yeah. And I, and so I remember one mother, she was so strict. She wouldn't let her kids, she'd take things to the parties and mm-hmm. things like that. And so they never learnt yeah. that, that lesson. And I feel. just would say to my kids, do what you want, go for it. Yeah. You know, knock yourself out. Yeah. And yeah, they'd always vomit because they weren't used to that food. Yeah. And I think that. You know, then Christmas would come around and they soon learnt what was right for them and what, what wasn't and how much they could consume. And I think I think it's valuable, these lessons for our oh, children. Definitely. And it's not just at Christmas time or Easter, you know, mm. with the Easter egg hug, hunt, mm-hmm. you know, hunt, and then they eat every chocolate there yeah. is and then vomit that yeah. one as well. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's they soon learn what makes them feel good and what yeah, doesn't. Exactly. And they need to learn that from a very young age. I think we're too precious yep. sometimes. Um, and I, th- I think of it like the Australian Aboriginal people or native people mm-hmm. and um, the parents were teaching them what was poisonous and what wasn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes it would be, you know, they've eaten something that wasn't right and they might have a sore tummy and they'll vomit that up. And I see it as the same thing. Yeah. Um, in that we're teaching our kids what makes them feel good and what doesn't. But when you are so strict on them and you won't allow them to at least attempt um, smarties and a hundred of them at once, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they're never going to learn that that lesson. So yeah, you're right. That, that was the way I did it when my kids were growing up, and now I wait for my grandchildren, and mm. um, I can hardly wait. I Aww. said to, yeah, I can hardly wait till. I get to teach them lessons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like the letting them touch the stove when it's just a little bit hot so they learn. Ow. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. that kind of thing. You, you, you're sort of there to make sure they don't go completely crazy, but to give them that little bit of leeway is pretty wise. <laughs> I think so. Like yeah. I just uh, bought for my nephew who's seven. So I, he's really getting interested in camping and four-wheel driving and, yeah. you know, being out in nature. So I bought him um, binoculars um, 
a compass, um, a like a um, what do you call it? A magnifying glass. Yeah. So I bought him stuff so he could go exploring. But I also included a multi tool. Ah, oh, beautiful. And the multi tool has scissors and knives and things yeah. like that. And, and his mum, you know, I said, "You're welcome to not give it to him, but it's in the pack, and I want you <laughs> yeah. to know about it." So and so she was really nervous about it, but my brother, who's very much about it, you know experiential learning Mm -hmm. he said he can use it when we're around Mm. he's got a you know you think about our our um our people our natives and I always think this our native people or our hunter gatherers those seven-year-olds would have had a knife oh yeah you know they would have been learning how to use that knife the sharpness of the knife the the danger of the knife how to Mm -hmm. use that knife because they would have had to understood you know how to kill or 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 you know do something with it in some realm so um, you know reading about american indians too and the way that they taught their children it's the same sort of thing from very young they were out with bow and arrow shooting Mm. at birds and learning how to hunt and it's trial and error some of it but they they would have got the training they needed to you know learn how to make the fires and use the tools and I guess we have to bring that into our families and we had a really good podcast a while back with Mary Kelly talking about learning to let go with your children especially when you've been healing for a long time from lots and lots of like she had anaphylactic allergies and all that kind of stuff with her kids and as they healed and she started to see the changes she realized now I have to actually learn how to let go and pull back and not be that really protective mama all the time and the way that she's seen her children grow and blossom as she pulls back, it's very, um, yeah, it's something that we as parents find difficult sometimes, maybe as mums, <laughs> find very difficult at times. And the food side of things, you know, especially if you've got kids that have food reactions, it's tricky, but you've got to try and find that balance, I think, right? Yeah, I think we're, you know, like, one of the women that I was hiking with just said, I can't believe they're allowing us to hike with a 300-metre drop right beside us. Ah. And he, she said, it's almost like there's no nanny state here, yeah. that we are free to make our choices. Yeah. Um, there was only one guardrail hmm. and that was all in that whole four-day hike. Wow. And, and we were on, like just anybody look it up, look up three capes track and yeah, look right. at the spectacular columns of cliffs wow. um, that we were walking right beside. And I, I think we do live in a nanny state. We're mm-hmm. not um, – every. it's always everybody else's fault, not yeah. taking your responsibility for, you know, what you're doing, how you're acting, how, how you, you know, do things. And I think as mothers we become – the nanny state. Yes. No, don't touch that. And in schools, it's a nanny state. Oh, definitely. You know, you're not allowed to take nuts. You're not allowed yeah. to take eggs. You're not allowed to take, uh, I don't know. I, it's just about, well, what can you take anymore? Yeah. yeah. I, and I just think that, you know, a young these children, and I know as young, very young children that's hard yeah. and we have to be aware of that. Mm. But as they get older, they've got to know that yeah. and that, the people that are having nut sandwiches, they don't open them inside, so we teach them that, you know, mm-hmm. peanut butter or almond or whatever it is, you know, they're to go um, outside and that person knows that that is the nut area and they are over on the other area. And I just yeah. I think that for the few, many are being, um, you know, we're not allowed to take good healthy foods to school, yeah. eggs. You know, nuts. Yeah, I did have one lady write to me and say they weren't allowed to have, I think it was eggs, nuts or dairy at their school and she's like, we don't eat grains and wheat and I am so mm. stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. It's interesting. I, I wrote an article uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks ago and it was about this new vaccine for celiac disease. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I read an article just saying, why would we do that when it's a simple thing of just removing wheat? Well, yeah. I just got absolutely hammered I bet you did. by <laughs> mothers saying, it's hard, I can't do it, I, I've got to have my chips 
fried mm. in, in a different oil. I can't go to every restaurant. I'm unable to socialize. My people, my friends think I'm weird and things like that. And, and I just went, oh, for goodness sake, stop having a modern day tantrum. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's more than your, you know, your whole thing about I can't do this and I can't do that. Why do we have the problem in the first place is the question you've got to ask. Why do we have these kids with nut allergies, egg allergies, dairy allergies? Because of the food system and the agricultural system. Mm. And this, and that is the bigger picture. Yes, yeah, go on, have your vaccine for celiac disease and continue to eat the food out there. You know, and then you're not addressing the issue, which is our agricultural system and mm. our food system. Yeah. I just... And it's just I going, there's just going to be another problem pop up. You sort of put a Band-Aid on that one and something else will pop up, so. Yeah. And I think at Christmas we should, as listeners of your podcast, <laughs> um, really make a stand on this. Yeah. And not buy um, chickens that have been in cages or turkeys that are not treated well. Okay. And to buy organic foods. And, you know, someone said, oh, it's too expensive and, um and I went, you're not seeing the real expense of this. Yeah. You're not actually seeing what is happening to the planet because mm. our agricultural system has the ability to save this planet. Yeah. It can sequester carbon into the ground. Uh, at the moment, a lot of our ground has 1% carbon. Mm. We can get it to 6 and 8%, which means all that carbon that's in the atmosphere that's causing a big issue mm. can be sequestered into the soil. We can improve our soils. We can create nutrient-dense foods. And why don't we make this Christmas, that Christmas where we're thinking that we don't buy plastics, we don't mm. buy foods um, in our supermarket, we support our local farmers, we support our local turkey man, our local chicken mm. man. We support these people yeah. so that we make a stand this Christmas um, uh, as human beings on this planet trying to make a difference. And I know that people don't want to do this at Christmas, but why not? Why yeah. not? It's the best time to do it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this... You know, and talk to your kids about presents and, and yeah. what they're going to get and how it's going to go and how Santa has decided that he's sick of what's happening on the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when you talk to kids about this stuff, they're much more sensitive to it than adults are usually. And, the, and you explain to them, like my friend was visiting the other week and she said um, she got into a discussion with her daughter about, you know, looking after the planet and what's happening to the planet. She's like six or some, seven maybe. And just her daughter was just asking all these really good questions and then, she, she asked her mum, well, mum, why do we go to school so far away from home? Because we're driving too far. It's not good for the planet. And then she started asking all these really hard questions. And it's like, it's actually the adults that have the trouble. <laughs> the kids are like, okay, let's do something about this. Wow. <laughs> you know? Wow, and she was like, great wow. question. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many things that when you start talking to kids about them, they just, they're on board. They're ready to change. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's yeah. a good thing that um, our young people are wanting to do that. Yeah. But I have also see um, a very, like, I, I think it's a mother's and father's responsibility to start um, having conversations with their kids about this mm. um, because my generation, because I'm part of the baby boomers, yeah. we didn't ask questions. We didn't... Um, yeah. You know, it was from the Depression in the 40s after the war um, and during the two world wars. Um, so the baby boomers were like 1945 right through to 1962, 63. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot. There was, you know, we weren't thinking. Um, we were boarding, being brought up in a world that was still pretty basic, yeah. not a lot of plastics, no grocery stores, no McDonald's, no. But then by the time we got into our 20s, it was all starting to roll around. Yeah. And then, and we didn't question that. And I think now um, we, as the end of the baby boomers, like I'm 1960, mm -hmm. I have to start um, questioning everything that I'm doing, you know, yeah. and everything um, that we, we buy. So for me, I have to make those choices. Yeah. Um, one more question before we finish. Yes. Do you have any, like, did you do the Christmas stocking type of thing when the kids were little? And do you, 
or I suppose it's changed so much now. This is one of the questions I get a lot. What kind of things can I put in like Christmas stockings for kids? Because like if you go to the shops and buy stocking stuffers, it's plastic junk and junk food. So do you have some great tips for things that parents could pop into the Christmas stocking this year? Some, anything in I, your shop that's awesome that they would love? <laughs> I, I, I think getting out in nature is really important. Yep. And what I got my nephew will be something that will last him a lifetime. Yeah, definitely. Because it's good quality. Now, I, I know that we have um, Christmas stuffing um, stuffers, but I would put like a hat in there that they will use all year. That's a good idea. But, uh, the best thing of all though was this is what I used to do before the this was when the kids were little so we're looking back 20 years ago so <laughs> my husband was the man that went out and bought crap yes um, and we put it in a pillowcase and it would be water pistols and whistles yeah, and same. you know <laughs> yeah. stickers and yeah. all of that stuff so the kids would just you know grab into it and have a ball with it mm -hmm. and then what they didn't use I'd put back into the stock <laughs> and put the same thing in next year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I could t totally do that. When they were little, there was things that would just get left, yeah. Exactly. That's so funny. So I just put it away with the Christmas, you know, with all the Christmas decorations. I'd put it away with all of that stuff. And um, yeah, <laughs> they wouldn't remember. Just re, re, re repurpose. Do, I, hope, I wonder if I'm, if I'm not the only mum that put things in that were, like, for school, like new pencils and pens yes. and, yeah. <laughs> I always did that. Yeah, and I think that that's a fair thing to do. Stickers, and they love yeah. stickers. You know, yeah. the, my kids love sticker books, so we would put a sticker book in and a colouring book in and some new colouring pencils. And yeah. But if there was any junk that, you know, even tennis balls, my, my husband would buy three tennis balls for them. Oh, yeah. And they wouldn't use them, so I'd put them back in the Christmas <laughs> stocking the next year. <laughs> well, when we were growing up, it was always – we always had nuts in the shelves – and that was a big oh, part of Christmas yeah. where you would go d out, we would go down to the garage and bang them with hammers and break them open and eat them. And that was part of Christmas. You always had nuts in the shells in stockings. What a brilliant idea. Yeah, that was, and mum said she always had an orange in her stocking. And that was so special because in America, you know, in winter, that to get an orange was just so special because it was from another place. And <laughs> but, you know, just a nice, treat that um, they may not usually get but yeah it's so good to think of some different ideas no I agree with you like uh, you know because my kids are so much older I'm not even I don't Thinking even of think stockings about it. now no. no I haven't done a stocking but you know what you've given me some great ideas for my oh, grandchildren good. when oh, they good. arrive yes not that one's arriving at the <laughs> moment but you know and I say this to my girls all the time mm, when they arrive this is what I'll be doing <laughs> do <laughs> they roll their eyes at you <laughs> my my Casey says to me Mum, you've got my child's life already organised and I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I want to spend time up on the farm with them and teach them how to grow food and show them how That's to ferment the and make foods and make it all about sustainability and yes. food and, yes. um, you know, and, I, and as I've said to my, my girls and my son and his girlfriend, you know, this will be a place if, you know, they can't get into schools and they can't get into um, preschools because um, or daycare because of our way of thinking mm -hmm. um, or they feed them bad foods or whatever. Yeah. I'll create up in the farm a, a play group and a, yep. a school and a kindergarten and, you know, I just we'll all I think come some, there. Yeah. <laughs> well, homeschool. I'll homeschool. Yeah, you've done it before. My general manager, who's now my managing director of my my company, just said, I'm going to use you up all I can because I know when those grandchildren come, that'll be it. Oh, I that's so funny. <laughs> Cindy will disappear into grandma land. I, I won't hear from me again. No. Oh. Well, those are some, those are some great ideas. Um, I had one more question. Yes. Do you have any tips for people who totally stress out over the holiday season? how they can make it a more relaxing time, de-stress. I think you've really told us, like, go away with your family. I think that's a perfect idea. <laughs> yeah, but if you are home, I, 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 I would just – the thing is you can't do more than you can do. Mm. Um, ask for help. 
yeah. from family. I think that's really important. Don't try and do the whole meal and everything by yourself. Mm, Don't make everything perfect. Who cares? Yeah. Um, just I, like for me, we're in a program mm-hmm. and the program is this is the way we should behave and this is what mm. we should do and this is the traditions of Christmas. Yeah. Um, don't be in the program. Mm. Be different. Be do it differently. Don't accept every invitation if it's too much for you. Oh, yes. Just don't accept every invitation, or don't accept any invitations and just say, you know what, this is family time. I'm I'm not going to be doing that. And yeah. I know that there is a grandmother and a mother-in-law and a um, you know uncles. these people yeah. are an uncle or you know or a, a, a brother-in-law. Someone is going to push your buttons. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that it's only one day a year. <laughs> yeah. You know, let them push the buttons but don't react. Yeah. Try and get out of the program. Uh, and that I think a lot of us are so nervous about Christmas because of a past experience. Mm-hmm. But if then that creates a predictable Christmas mm-hmm. from a past experience. But if you don't look at what's happened in the past and you just go, right, this is a new day. If I really look at things differently, I won't have a predictable Christmas and I can enjoy, you know, enjoy this. Because yeah. um, I, I just, I do see so many stressed out people and mm. um, I don't think it's worth it. No, and it definitely isn't. It, you see it daily too. Yeah. You know, getting the kids to school, I watch it all around me. I have yeah. a lot of young families around me and I just loved when I homeschooled. Same. I, <laughs> Yeah, oh, ex- while you were yeah, while you were saying that um, everyone getting stressed out about school and everything, I was thinking that's the reason I started homeschooling because it was so stressful for me with a newborn and a one year old and trying to get two kids on the bus, living on a farm, running down that hundred meter driveway trying to get them on the bus with lunches packed and losing my hair plaited. Yeah, it was just like ah. Oh. And then they'd get nits and then they, <laughs> I was like, yep. I can't stand this anymore. <laughs> Homeschooling was easier. <laughs> but now, yeah, it's just um, obviously different for everyone. But, yeah, simplify in whatever way you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah I th- and I live the simple life. Yeah. Um, you know, declutter, I did a huge yeah. declutter um, recently. I just went, nope, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I don't want this stuff. Mm. I don't. Want any of it? And Maybe you know, I've got all your family and friends know. Please don't give me clutter for Christmas. <laughs> don't <laughs> Just give come me spend a bit of time with present. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come and spend time with me. Take me for coffee of a morning. You know, yeah, it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I you've given me a few ideas for Christmas. My mum and dad always want, like I always just make them something food wise, like a beautiful yeah. pie or something like that, and that's our Christmas presents because it's just crazy the amount of clutter you end up with in Mm. life Um, and I just think it's such a beautiful idea to when we were kids we would actually go to the um, river for the day and we'd take a picnic Um, we'd have all the fresh you know the summer fruit and we'd have our sandwiches and we'd go to a go to a river and just lay around in the sun and swim Mm. all day and that was still to me that's always been my favorite Christmas just that I mean, and how simple is that? <laughs> mm-hmm. so. and, and I think that that's what it is. It's just simplicity, not mm. complicating it. And Having a day off together and just yep. enjoying it. Yeah. Well, thank yep. you for all your beautiful ideas. Do you have anything you want to share with everyone about what you're doing or what's happening for you, mm. changing habits? Oh, everything's always happening. Our marketplace, <laughs> yeah, our marketplace is just growing That's big good. time. Yeah. Um, so the Changing Habits Marketplace, you can get so many foods there now, not just our Changing Habits products, but products that I um, personally use yep. um, and, in, and endorse. So, so they're there. Um, at the Functional Nutrition Academy, our registered training organisation, um, very soon we will be offering um, soil health, mm-hmm. understanding how to create your own nutrient-dense foods oh, and, wow. and the essence is soil health and ecology. Mm-hmm. So we're offering that. Uh, let me th- I'm doing an inner circle next year mm-hmm. for 20 people only starting in February. There's um, no marketing out for that at the moment, but people will see that in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So um, we're going to spend a year to change a life. That's what it is. Well, that's really if, good. Yeah, a year to change your life. So there'll be 
workshops uh, four times a year. There'll be webinars, private Facebook page. And at the end of the year, I'll show them how far they've come. Mm. We will be doing a couple of amazing challenges. I've been having so <laughs> much fun putting this together. Oh. So I'm really, really excited about that. Oh, that's uh, cool. And apart from that, we'll just keep getting more and more foods in the Changing Habits Marketplace. And my farm is producing more and more food. Um, Your farm is amazing. I, I look at the pictures on Instagram and go, right, I have to visit sometime. <laughs> do, Joe. I'll do. bring my daughter. India wants to come. <laughs> oh, please do. She'd and India it. can work on the farm. She Any would love she that. Would... <laughs> <laughs> I'll send her down. <laughs> please do. She's got a month off in February, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that's Be great. good to see you. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Cindy, for the last minute podcast. And it was really great. I, I hope that everyone enjoyed it. And you can find Cindy at Changing Habits, is it .com.au? That's right. Yes. Woohoo. Well, I'll put the links in the show notes anyway and pop over and have a look. And, um, yeah, thanks for all the And I'll ideas. get that recipe for you oh, for those dates. thank is, you. Yeah. I want to yeah. try that. I'll have to test it before Christmas to make sure it's okay. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Cindy. Love you. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.